Welcome back guys. So you asked me to do my 10 favorite wrestlers of all times. So a couple of things to think about here. You always enjoy the wrestling you watched as a kid the most. Now I started watching late or mid 90s to late 90s, right when WWE started turning into the Attitude Era. So my favorite time was late uh, new generation, early Attitude Era, because that's the time I started watching wrestling. Now this is not the 10 best wrestlers in the world. This is just my 10 favorite WWE wrestlers. So mine is going to be fairly Attitude Era based and you guys already know probably it's gonna be one, two, three, four because I speak about it so often, but still enjoy this journey with me. There might be a couple of curveballs in there, maybe one or two, you guys might not see it come. But anyway, let me know in the comment section who is your 10 favorite WWE superstars of all time. Not the 10 you think are the best wrestlers, just your 10 favorite. So at number 10, this is going to be the first curveball. It's going to be Jake the Snake Roberts. Now, why is he on here? Because at a time where he was, everybody was shouting their promos. Everybody was like, yeah, brother, I'm going to do He took it down to this level. And he just spoke in such hushed tones. But he intimidated you with his, just his his promos alone would intimidate you. Then he's carrying a snake around. Then he would slouch in the corners before the matches started. Now, I don't want to speak about his personal demons. That's not for me to say, but still, Jake the Snake Roberts, he is one of the best. He pioneered a whole generation of speakers. If you listen to guys like Mick Foley, guys like Undertaker, they were on the road with him, picking his brain of what to do, what, how to act, how to move, how to do all those kinds of things. Jake the Snake Roberts, he deserves a spot on my top 10 just for the promo abilities alone and just for the the future he sculpted when it came to these creepy characters now it's it's well known that my favorite genre of movies is horror movies and jake the snake he's like a horror movie villain one of his best promos and again my videos are based on wb but i do watch other promotions when he cut a, a promo on cody in aw when he said never turn your back on somebody you respect or are afraid of and he immediately turned his back and walked away that is pure gold at number nine it's gonna be viva la razza so during early 2000s there was the smackdown six of which eddie guerrero he was part of now these these six guys they put up absolute banger match of the banger match of the banger match whether it was in triple threats one-on-ones tag matches whatever you wanted to do they would just have banger after banger. Now, what made me love Eddie Guerrero so much, I mean, he came to the ring in a low rider. That's, that's enough said already. But apart from that, his lying, cheating, stealing antics made him so beloved. It was supposed to be a heel character, but just how he lied, cheated, and steal, stole, stealed, I almost said stealed. How he lied, cheated, and stole just made him such a beloved character. If you haven't seen his lying, cheating, stealing antics, just fire it up on YouTube and just watch him just oh, the shenanigans and sometimes it backfired on him but just for that Eddie Guerrero deserves a spot on my top 10. At number eight and this guy genuinely terrified me when I was younger is The Undertaker. So again I grew up right around Ministry of Darkness age Undertaker where he had like sacrificed people and stuff like that. It was just absolute insanity. My parents didn't really like me watching wrestling back then because of all these things but I still I just grew up loving it so much. Undertaker he changed his gimmick to American Badass. I wasn't the biggest fan of that, but then he came back with his Phenom character and just the Undertaker. I listened to every single one of his podcasts, Six Feet Under, and I just, I'm so in awe of the, the knowledge this guy has about the business, the, the amount of stories he can tell, the amount of history there is with this character. And Undertaker, for a guy of his size to put on five star matches on a regular basis and to be able to tell the stories and all those kinds of things, Undertaker, you are just a goat. Number seven is the rated R superstar Edge. So when I was in, it was just after high school, when a couple of my friends and I, we always spoke about wrestling. You were either a John Cena guy or you were Edge guy because they were the polar opposites. John Cena was always the goody two shoes, the, the does everything right for the people. And Edge was the one, if I'm gonna get an opportunity, I'm gonna take it. The ultimate opportunity is all of that. I was an Edge guy. All my friends, they were John Cena guys. They were, how could you like the bad guy? And oh, if the bad guy had so much more fun, who would you rather have been on TV? Would you rather have been Edge or John Cena? I know I would have rather been Edge. He had so much more fun on TV and his cashing of money in the bank, everything is just so spectacular. 
Number six is The Rock. Now you might be saying this is slightly low, but this is my list after all. The Rock, he hasn't had such a long career. He was in WWE from late 90s to early 2000s, and then he took a very long break, and then he came back for a couple of sporadic spells. People think he had a massively long career. He actually didn't. But the reason why not is because he's such a successful actor. He's just successful in everything he does. Now, contrary to popular belief, everybody just loves the people's champion, The Rock. My favorite version of The Rock was Hollywood Rock. When he came back and he played guitar and he just had the feud with Hurricane, that was so good. Obviously, his stuff with Stone Cold is 10,000 chef's kisses, but I do appreciate the Hollywood Rock heel gimmick he had. Number five is Kurt Angle, the wrestling machine, Perk Angle, whatever you want to call him. So he came into the business not knowing much about professional wrestling. Obviously, he was a standout amateur guy, but the way he took to the business, the way he absolutely dominated everything he did, whether that was in-ring, whether that was heel, whether that was face, whether that was comedic. I mean, he's <laughs> milk stuff, all of that. Everything is just so classic. He's um, United, um, I must say United States Open Champion. That was John Cena. He's um, champion of um, gold medal open challenge. All of that was just absolute gold. I mean, and don't get me started on the tiny, tiny cowboy hat, the kumbaya with somebody that might be later on this list. He was just such a beast. Number four is the charismatic enigma, Jeff Hardy. Now, out of everybody on this list, I probably popped the most whenever Jeff Hardy's music would hit. And I'm talking about either the Hardy Boys together or No More, no more Words. That, so good. Um, Jeff Hardy, he, the reason I love Jeff Hardy so much is the same reason I love someone else that's coming later on this list so much. Jeff Hardy put his body on the line for my entertainment. He jumped off structures he should never have jumped off. He hurt his body in ways that I can never imagine. And that was all for my entertainment. And I appreciated that so much. So there was always the, the debate, Edge and Christian or the Hardy Boys. I was always a Hardy Boys guy. And that wasn't necessarily because of Matt Hardy. I like Matt Hardy as well, but it was because Jeff Hardy. Number three is Randy Orton, the apex predator, the viper. The reason I loved Randy Orton so much was when he started, he was that cocky young upstart in evolution. Obviously, he started before that, but I really like that character. The young, brash, cocky, I'm better than everyone. I'm the thoroughbred. All of you are nothing compared to me. I like that so much. Then when he broke free of evolution, I enjoyed his face run. Most people didn't. I enjoyed it so much. Then he turned heel again, and then he became absolutely psychotic, deranged, 2009, bald head, Randy Orton, which is just incredible. And then he's just one of the most endearing characters. I mean, he's still competing at the highest level and still getting great matches out of everybody he participates with. And for that, Randy Orton absolutely deserves a spot on this list. Number two is Mick Foley, specifically either Mick Foley or Mankind. I like Cactus Jack, I like Dude Love, but I love Mankind and Mick Foley. This is what I spoke about earlier with Jeff Hardy. The stuff this man has done to his body for our entertainment. Now, granted, he said he's hurting himself a lot to retire early. I respect that so much. But the things he's done, he just seems like the most likable character in the entire world. I mean, you can't see it right now because I took the background out, but he sits right there behind me. He's just the most likable person probably in the entire world, in my opinion, of course. That whole thing where he turned it on the rock, where he's like, it doesn't matter what you think. And then he took a, a victory lap around the ring. When The Rock lost his sunglasses, he picked it up. All the stuff with soccer, everything is just pure gold. And all I wish is just that none of the pain he experienced was real. And number one, you guys already know, he sits right there as well. Not that you can see it, but it's Stone Cold Steve Austin. I grew up late 90s. That was my absolute jam. Yes, I'm an Attitude Era fan. Sue me. So the Attitude Era is the best era in any wrestling promotion ever. I don't care what you say. Yes, did all the stories age? Well, no, of course not. But the characters. Stone Cold, the character. Who did not want to beat their boss up on a weekly basis? I'm not saying you should, but I'm just saying who didn't want to be able to do that? Who didn't want to be that beer swilling redneck that just does whatever they want whenever they want no matter 
what the consequences and he will just deal with the consequences his right his rise to the top was just the stuff of legends austin 316 speech with michael psa is absolutely brilliant his heel turn it wasn't successful because people just didn't want to boo him but that whole playing it off of Vince McMahon, like i said earlier with the tiny cowboy hat all of that just absolute pure gold and for that all of that just everything he's ever done stone cold is the absolute best wrestler to ever live let me know in, your, in the comment section who your 10 favorite are. And that's mine. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Peace.